Hey guys, you may know me as Mermaid Ophelia or Kelpie Dreams. Today I'd like to talk to you about two monofins, the Murtaylor Original Fantasy Fin, also known as the Fantasy One Fin, and the Murtaylor Fantasy Three Monofin. They're super comfortable to use and I would definitely recommend both of them. Throughout the video, I'm going to break down how each of them swim differently and which one I would recommend for which situation. Now, this video is not sponsored, I'm just doing a review of some equipment that I really enjoy using. So if you aren't familiar, the monofin is the piece of equipment that actually powers the mermaid tail. Both of these monofins are made completely out of silicone and I find them very comfortable to wear. They're pretty heavy on land, but I don't really find that translates to how they feel in the water. So this is my plum purple Fantasy One or original Fantasy Monofin. It is the smaller of the two, very sparkly, very comfortable. Both of these fins are so comfortable. I love wearing them. And then this ah, is the Fantasy Three Monofin. So as you can see, there is quite a size difference between the two. I'm going to be running through some basic movements and mermaid swimming to help show you guys the difference between these two monofins. Now, when I run through this footage, I'm going to be using the same terminology for movements that I do at my event performance company. That isn't necessarily to say that my terminology is right and someone else's is wrong, it's just the terminology that I use to refer to these movements. Hopefully the video will help illustrate which movements I'm talking about and we'll all be on the same page. Since I'm doing a review video, I thought it best to give genuine footage where I'm actually practicing, so please excuse my glamorous swim cap and illustrious goggles. So now that you've seen both the Fantasy 1 and Fantasy 3 fins, let's get started. The first category I'm going to be covering is basic movement and how it feels to swim in each fin. So swimming in the Fantasy 1 fin feels very natural to be honest. It's almost like you're not wearing anything at all, but still a lot faster than just your bare feet. Now the Fantasy 3 is still very comfortable and also feels quite natural to move around in, but the fin is so big that you can definitely tell something is there. You can actually kind of feel the tips of it jiggle with every stroke. The Fantasy 1 fin requires more work or kicks to swim along, whereas the Fantasy 3 fin is so large that it sort of powers itself along in a glide once you establish a good rhythm with it. So while both fins are going to be powered by your basic dolphin kick or mermaid kick, I've noticed that I feel Fantasy 1 swimming more in my thighs and Fantasy 3 swimming more in my core. The glide of each kick lasts longer in the Fantasy 3 fin and can sort of be reset by an upper body undulation to keep your glide going. The Fantasy 1 fin, on the other hand, seems to mostly be powered by the kicks themselves and you have to focus on keeping your upper body stable while your thighs power you along in the kick. I would say that the Fantasy 3 is my preferred fin for a generalized forward swim. It feels like less work for a prettier swim because of the amount of momentum-based gliding you can get worked up. It is possible that the fluidity I'm seeing in the Fantasy 3 swimming is just an illusion created by the big fluttery fin tips, but honestly, I'll still take it. Now we're going to compare the dexterity of these two fins, or how nimble these two fins are when executing more complicated movements. First I'm going to be doing some barrel rolls, which are just a simple forward moving spin. When using the Fantasy 1, I mostly execute barrel rolls with my arms. I find that I complete the spin without having to add any kicks. The movement is quick, fluid, and feels very natural or easy to execute. When executing a barrel roll in the Fantasy 3 fin, I've noticed that I have to use my entire upper body to commit to the spin. I also have to add a little kick toward the end of the spin in order to exit the movement properly. I found that if I don't include this little kick, the size of the fin will actually cause the spin to stall out and can make it look like I stumble out of the movement. The end result is a much slower barrel roll, which can actually look very lovely and graceful if executed properly. The only downside I would say in slowing this movement down is it can make it much more obvious if there are mistakes in your form. I wouldn't say that the Fantasy 3 fin makes it harder to execute barrel rolls, just that you have to really make sure you're doing the movement properly since it will need to be done more slowly than in a Fantasy 1 fin. Now we're going to talk about turns. Here's just a basic turn in the Fantasy 1 fin. You can see it's pretty simple and easy to execute. Now the same basic turn in a Fantasy 3 fin can become a little more difficult if you don't have as much momentum built up behind it. I found myself stalling in the middle of a turn if I didn't have enough momentum behind the turn. This may have been in part due to the restrictions of the width of my lap lane, but I think it also has a lot to do with the sheer size of this monofin. If you don't have a lot of momentum built up behind your more complicated movements, you're going to have a tendency to stall out or stumble out of those movements. Here on the other hand are some of what we refer to as sit turns, a kind of vertical turn with a spin included. Sit turns are what I would consider to be my turn solution for the Fantasy 3 fin. 
I find sit turns much easier to execute in the Fantasy 3 fin, even easier to execute than they are in the Fantasy 1 fin sometimes. I also think they're my answer to having to perform or execute movements in a tighter or more restricted space, such as the width of a lap lane or, say, a tank show. Here's me going back to some standard turns in both fins and then doing some more sit turns. You can probably see how much easier it is for me to execute sit turns in the Fantasy 3 fin than it is a basic turn. Alright, backflips. I find that backflips in the Fantasy 1 feel just like backflips with no mono fin at all. You just kind of spin your arms and away you go. Now, in the Fantasy 3, backflips are honestly a little weird. I've noticed I don't have to use my arms as much because of the weight of the monofin and the momentum built up by the initial dive. However, due to that very same weight, and also the size of the monofin, it generates enough drag that I've noticed the Fantasy 3 fin can slow down my flip quite a bit. I'm not sure if you can see, but the tips of the Fantasy 3 fin actually sit on my shoulders when I'm doing a backflip. And the fin itself is so big that I didn't actually have room to do a backflip from the side because of the width of my lap lane. So here are what we call spiral dives. They're pretty self-explanatory, and I found them very easy to execute in either fin. When doing spiral dives in the Fantasy 3 fin, I found them easier to execute than a barrel roll in a Fantasy 3 fin. I noticed that they both had the same tendency to force the movement to slow down, but I think when being executed in a dive, it just becomes a lot more pretty and graceful. Now I'm going to be addressing the weight and power of the two monofins. I've heard a lot of people express concern about the weight of Mertaylor monofins since they are cast in all silicone. On land, these things can feel pretty hefty. For example, my big giant pink Fantasy 3 fin is about 15 pounds. I've noticed that I can't really feel the weight underwater until I lift it above the water. For example, when executing a whale dive. Here you can see me doing a whale dive in the Fantasy 1 versus the Fantasy 3 fin. And you can see how much more depth and momentum is generated by my dive from the Fantasy 3 versus the Fantasy 1. Okay, treading. So honestly, I find both fins equally easy to tread in. Both fins are powerful enough for no hands treading. I like sculling while I'm wearing the Fantasy 1 fin, but I found that the Fantasy 3 fin is large enough that I actually don't need to use my hands at all unless I just want to. Up next, I'm going to be doing a sync count to try to help further illustrate the weight and power of each monofin. In the Fantasy 1 monofin, it took me 5 counts to sink to the bottom of the 14 foot deep end, and 3 kicks to get back up to the surface. In the Fantasy 3 monofin, it took me 4 counts to sink to the bottom of the deep end, and 2 kicks to get back up to the surface. I do feel it's important to mention that during all of the swimming, treading, and sinking, I have never actually felt that either monofin was physically dragging or weighing me down in the water. This may just be because I'm a competent swimmer, but I do feel it important to mention to anyone who might be nervous about the weight of these fins. I think both fins work fine for running through poses or doing some stationary video footage. The Fantasy 3 fin tends to exaggerate your movements with the wiggly little fin tips. It makes it look very lifelike, and I think it could be a really cool effect in a video when you're properly done up like a mermaid and not looking like a nerd with a swim cap on. One thing that's probably worth mentioning throughout the segment is that I'm very good at buoyancy control. It's actually one of the few things I'm not afraid to admit I'm pretty good at is remaining stationary underwater. That being said, I don't know for sure how someone who struggles with buoyancy control might find the weight of these fins affecting or not affecting them. For example, if you tend to experience issues with floating to the surface, I am not sure if you would still need a weight belt when using the heavier Fantasy 3 fin or not. In terms of speed, I would actually argue that the two monofins are about equal, they just feel a little bit different to swim in. I find that the Fantasy 1 fin has a shorter glide longevity and requires more kicks, while the Fantasy 3 fin has a very long glide longevity and requires more body undulation. The Fantasy 1 fin sometimes feels faster, but I honestly think it's just the amount of kicks you're putting in. Sometimes it sort of feels like you're running. Whereas the Fantasy Fantasy 3 fin is so big and heavy that you can sort of get into a rhythm and glide along off of your own momentum. The end result is a very calm motion that could feel slower, but really it's just a more relaxed movement that's moving at about the same rate of speed from what I can tell in the video. Okay, here are some of my final thoughts. Some points for the Fantasy 1 monofin. The Fantasy 1 is a very portable monofin that still has a great mermaid size and shape. I think that the Fantasy 1 monofin is great for all experience levels, but especially beginners. And finally, I think that the Fantasy 1 monofin is a great training fin. It slows you down just enough to help you learn really good mermaid swimming habits, but still gives you enough speed so that it isn't difficult or discouraging for a beginner to use. 
some points for the Fantasy 3 mono fin. The Fantasy 3 mono fin is a huge statement fin that looks very graceful and lifelike in the water. The Fantasy 3 mono fin really forces you to clean up your mermaid swimming and make sure it's looking top quality and top tier. However, it also provides enough propulsion that competent swimmers and experienced mermaids alike can get a lot of use out of it. So here's some notes for beginners. I would definitely recommend the Fantasy 1 mono fin to beginners as either a first mono fin or a first mermaid specific mono fin as separate from say a free diving mono fin. I think the Fantasy 1 fin is fast enough to be accessible to a really wide range of experience levels, but also slow enough to teach you some really good mermaid swimming habits. I think it can really help teach you some good habits before moving on to your first full tail. When I talk about good mermaid swimming and good habits in mermaid swimming, I'm really talking about grace, fluidity, and control. When swimming like a mermaid, you want to look like you belong and are a part of the water, not that you're trying to get through it as quickly as possible and return to the surface so you can breathe. Freediving monofins tend to be fast and powerful, which are fun, definitely serve a purpose, and a lot of mermaids use them just fine and swim beautifully. However, I have noticed that some beginners do not benefit from the speed and power of a freediving monofin when they're first starting out. Sometimes the speed and power of a freediving monofin can create some bad habits that when slowed down and a full tail later on will make your swimming look a little bit sloppy. This isn't the case for everyone, but just for some of the people that I've taught. Now this isn't the case for everyone, but that being said, I do think the Fantasy One Fin is a great first step toward a tail. In all, I think the Fantasy One Fin is a great first step toward getting a tail, such as later on purchasing a whimsy skin, or replicating closer to what it feels like to actually swim with a mermaid tail in the water. However, I don't think I would recommend the Fantasy Three Monofin if you've never used any kind of monofin before. Because the Fantasy Three Monofin is so big, it requires a lot of precision and discipline to execute some specific complex movements. Because of that, I think it could be a little discouraging for beginners, especially beginners who have never used a monofin before, and would personally recommend starting with a smaller monofin, like the Fantasy 1. Now, if you're new to mermaiding but have used monofins before, such as freediving monofins, or maybe you're just very experienced with the dolphin kick in general, you'll probably be okay with a Fantasy 3 fin, but I do still think it's quite a jump going from no fin to a Fantasy 3, and I still would recommend the Fantasy 1 or a smaller mono fin in general for beginners. So here are some notes for experienced or professional mermaids. If you are a more experienced or professional mermaid and you haven't tried a Mertailer Fantasy 3 fin yet, I definitely think it is a great tool for you to use. The Fantasy 3 fin is a great tool for really elevating your swimming and almost replicating how it feels to swim with the full tail when just practicing in the pool. But that being said, I don't think the Fantasy 1 fin is a fin to be passed up or a beginner's only type of fin. I believe that both fins are excellent in different scenarios. Both are great for modeling whimsy skins or just for practice. I think the Fantasy 1 fin is a lot better with speed and dexterity, and the Fantasy 3 fin is a lot better with making sure that your form is smooth, elegant, and pretty in general. One thing I have noticed that professional or more experienced mermaids might want to keep in mind between these two fins is I've personally noticed that the Fantasy 1 fin requires a lot more creativity or improvisation when shooting than I've noticed needing in the Fantasy 3 fin. Now, what I mean by that is that the Fantasy 1 fin mostly benefits from demonstrating how quick and agile you can be in the tail in order to really sell that wow real mermaid factor. On the other hand, the Fantasy 3 fin is so large and graceful that even when holding still, you'll still get enough residual movement that you look like you're a moving, living art piece. So from my personal experience, a lot of times when I'm in the middle of a video or photo shoot, I'll sort of get a brain fart and be like, uh, what am I doing? <laughs> when that happens in the Fantasy 1 fin, it shows a little bit more because when you stop moving around, you sort of just freeze and you can really look like you forgot your line, so to speak. On the other hand, the Fantasy 3 fin is so huge that even if you're just doing pretty arms, you can kind of get away with it. You look like you're doing it on purpose. And the fin is so big that there will always be some amount of residual movement to it. I think if you prefer a lot of quick turns, movement, and agility, you'll probably prefer the Fantasy 1 fin. And if you prefer a more slow, graceful motion, something like a pretty arm sort of video shoot, then you're definitely going to be wanting to look into the Fantasy 3 fin. So for me personally, my favorite is definitely the Fantasy 3 mono fin. I don't actually think that the Fantasy 1 is a bad or inferior mono fin. I like it quite a lot and I'm still going to use it because I love my water lily whimsy skin so much. I just think that due to my personal needs and experience level, the Fantasy 3 is a much better fit for me. 
In the short time that I've had my Fantasy 3 monofin, I have noticed my mermaid swimming become so much more elegant and pretty because the fin really forces me to slow down and focus on what I'm doing and what my movements will look like. Even though it's technically easier to execute movements in the Fantasy 1 fin, and I still practice tighter motions in the Fantasy 1 fin, I really prefer the Fantasy 3 fin for forcing me to practice to the best of my ability and make sure that the movements I'm executing are always going to look good on camera. In addition, despite how big and heavy it is, I also really like the Fantasy 3 on land. It's super impressive in land shoots and really sells that wow, real mermaid sort of factor. Now, I will still be using my Fantasy 1 fin both on dry land and in the pool, but I think the Fantasy 3 is my new favorite. Don't tell my water lily. So as you can see, this wasn't a tutorial video video for mermaid tricks or mermaid movements underwater, so much as it was supposed to be a comparison video between the Fantasy 1 and Fantasy 3 mono fins for someone who might be curious or on the fence between the two. If you do think movement tutorials or mermaid tricks tutorials would be something that you might benefit from in the future, feel free to leave me a comment and I can look into making some more videos. And hey, if you found this video helpful or instructional enough to actually use as a movement tutorial video, then more power to you. If you're curious about the Fantasy 2 mono fin, which I didn't review in this video, I know that Raina Mermaid over with Halifax Mermaids made an excellent review video on the Fantasy 2 fin. I don't personally have one, so I can't give any feedback on it, but she's covered it quite thoroughly over there. I'll put the link in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and let me know what kinds of videos you'd like to see from me in the future. Make sure to subscribe for more mermaid videos as I will definitely be putting some more out soon. If you'd like to check out some more of my stuff, I'm Kelpie Dreams on Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. You can also check out my event performance company, Tahoe Banshees, on Instagram, Twitter, and their website, tahobanshees.com. Thank you so much for watching and happy swimming.